Hello knowledge seekers, hope you are doing well and as always if you are new to my channel I would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel so that you should be able to watch all my latest engineering videos. Thank you very much. Okay, so today we are going to discuss about uh, the distribution of shear stresses in a rectangular beams. Okay, in our previous uh, lectures we have already discussed the distribution of shear stresses in I section beams, distribution of shear stresses in T section beams. So, today our discussion will be about the shear stresses in rectangular beams. Okay. So, here you can see we have a rectangular beam whose width is P and whose height is H. Okay. And the centroid of this rectangular section cross section is at point O. Okay. And uh, just to let you know we have a shaded area starting from the top surface to basically uh, this point and from the origin its height is y1 ok this shaded area. This shaded area is very important when we are going to calculate q the first moment of area. So, you should remember this point very important and another very important point over here will be uh, the remember the centroid of this point this is very important ok it will be very crucial this point ok. So, let us start it ok. We are uh, ready to determine the distribution of the shear stresses in a beams of rectangular cross section ok. This is basically uh, the cross section 530A. The first moment of Q at the shaded part of the cross section is obtained by multiplying the area by the distance from its own centroid to neutral axis ok. Remember this point that this is going to be our neutral axis and this point the red point is basically the again the centroid of the shaded cross section ok and the neutral axis is passing exactly at point from point O ok. You must remember this very simple concepts. So, just to let you know ok. What is the first moment of area? Remember just to let you know the first moment of area is y bar d a this is the first moment of area ok. And uh, for this we have basically uh, taken as q is equals to this two expressions. What are these two expressions telling us? First of all let us say we calculate d a we have to calculate d a and again why we are calculating d a remember the most important thing we are going to put the shear stresses of this rectangular beam into this function and this is basically the shear stresses of uh, any cross section we can apply this factor ok. For the rectangular we will say v q upon i b and here the most important thing is q ok. We will calculate q remember the v the i and the b they are all constants ok. Only the variable factor in this uh, equation the shear stress formula is q. Okay, and q is what it is y bar integral of y bar d a dash ok. So, let us start it. So, d a will basically be again is going to be uh, the width is b and this height, but we do not know this height. We know it is h by 2 from the origin. So, we have to calculate this height. So, and remember this b into this thing is the area. So, b and how we will calculate this height? We have to calculate this height. We will say the width b into h by 2 h by 2 minus y 1 and we minus this y 1. So, h by 2 minus y 1 will give you this height. So, this is clear. Now, the most important thing and the most uh, problemsome and cumbersome is to calculate this thing y bar. When we calculate this y bar, what we will do is basically we have to calculate the height from this point to this point. Certainly, we have no knowledge about it. So, what we will do is basically we will calculate the height of y1, y1, then add what we have to add over here is basically h by 2, h by 2 minus y1, we, you are over here, ok, h by 2 minus y1, you are here this height, but we want to have this uh, reach this point. So, we will say h by 2 minus y 1 divided by divided by 2. So, when we do this we are exactly at this point remember. So, again let you know we have to calculate uh, this fun factor y bar it will be y 1 plus h by 2 minus y 1 
this height is there and then you want the centroid of this height it will be divided by 2. So, this is point is reached. So, so this is area into y bar. Now, multiply this expression with this expression you will end up with this value b by 2 h square by 4 minus y1 square. Okay. Now, remember the most important uh, all things are constant of the beam. The only variable over here is y1 square. This is the variable because you can change this y1 to over here or here or any or even below this but not below the origin. So, it height can be changed. So, this is the variable. Okay. So, the same results we can obtain by directly integration but we will we have performed through this method. Now, when we multiply this expression with this expression and with b, we are left with this equation q equals to b by 2 h square by 4 minus y1 square. Okay. So, when multiply we get uh, uh, basically uh, uh, this expression is basically going to be put over here. So, the value of q, the value of this q is going to be put over here. We are going to put at this q. So, we are left with vq over ib and when we put it over here, you see this is v, this is v, this is i, this is i, this is b, this is b and this thing q, this is q. When we multiply it, we get a shear stress equals to v over 2i into h square upon 4 minus y1 square. So, this has been done. Now, basically we want to see what does this equation shows. This equation shows that the same uh, sh the shear stresses in a rectangular beam vary quadratically with the distance y1 from the neutral axis. What does it mean? Again, it tells us that the shear stresses are varying quadratically because these are constants. So, the only variable is y1 square. So, it is a quadratic function. So, it is varying quadratically from the neutral axis. Okay. And when we plot this function, we, because it is quadratic, when we plot this function, we are going to get the shear stresses like this. Okay. Remember, the shear stresses will be 0. Remember, the shear stresses will be 0 at the topmost surface and the bottom most surface and always maximum at the neutral sec neutral axis. But the same is not true for the, the bending stresses. It is totally opposite. I hope you already know this factor. So, so what we see that uh, when uh, the shear stresses are varying as shown in 5-30b, this figure, okay, the shear stresses is 0 when y1 equals to plus minus h by 2. Yes, they are true. When we put the value of this y1 over uh, at h by 2 and minus h by 2, the values obtained will be automatically 0 because remember this is y1 square. So, h square by 1 4 and this and when we will put it over here, h by 2 the whole square will also be h square by 4. So, plus h square by 4 and minus uh, h square by 4 will give you a 0 value. So, uh, it and the whole expression vanishes and shear stress is 0. But if I put the value of y1 at this point, at this point, we here you, y1 will be 0. So, if I put y1 over 0, I will get shear stress equals to v h square over a type. We will get the value of what? I will get the value of v h square over 4 into 2 is a type. Okay. But if we know that this is the point where the shear stress, this is the point where the max shear stress will be maximum. So, what we can say now is that uh, the maximum we can say that the tau max equals to v h square over a i. Okay. Now, we already know what is going to be, we know what is going to be uh, tau max v h square upon a i. But uh, here, what is i? i is going to be 1 by 12 v h cube. So, 12 is dividing here. It goes multiply. We get v h square over 8 v h cube. Simplify this expression. I have done it for you. 3 by 2 v upon v h. But what is going to be b h? of the cross section, it is simply going to be the area of the entire cross section. So, we write 3 by 2 v upon a. Okay. Just to let you know, uh, if you have forgotten that uh, the average, just wait, uh, the average shear stress was, it is only the shear force per unit area. Okay. And this is was the average. Remember, we have already done it. And a question was also asked uh, to you guys in the midterm exam that majority of the whole batch has done wrong. Okay. So, it is V upon A. So, this tells you that uh, uh, this the maximum shear stress function over here, it 
tells you that it is 3 by 2 times of VA. So, we can say that the maximum shear stress in the beam of rectangular cross section is 50 percent larger than the average shear stress. So, a very important point uh, to be remembered, okay. And again, this function holds for not only the vertical shear stresses, but it will also holds for the horizontal layer of the shear stresses also. Remember, shear stresses either vertical or horizontal will have the same magnitude. Remember, the shear stresses are always complementary in nature. So, this point uh, must be uh, clear from you because you remember, uh, if, if uh, let you know that shear stresses, they are always complementary. If one shear stress is acting over here, the other one will be acting over here and if this is this, this is going to be this and uh, okay, we, this thing will take it anti-clockwise and uh, this shear stresses will be taking it as clockwise, okay. So, if it takes it like this, the shear stresses are positive anti-clockwise and otherwise it will be negative, okay. So, I hope this uh, concept uh, is going to be clear in front in all of your minds. And a very important concept uh, that I wanted to discuss with all of you guys. I hope you have understood it and uh, I thank you all for watching this video of mine and uh, uh, every one of you should have a wonderful day. Thanks.